Hi, this is Ed, KJ4FGI. Um, I used to see a lot of YouTube videos on go boxes before I built mine. This is about the uh, fourth one that I built. Um, I actually, the first one was out of uh, aluminum, you know, angle iron, and I riveted the, the box together. But this is a, a Gator case. This is an 8U uh, Gator case. Now we have uh, signal link USB. We have a citizen band radio CB. That's for uh, for uh, listening to uh, you know you, you got truckers out there and stuff like that. So if you need to know traffic conditions, um, that is definitely going to help you out uh, in any type of emergency. Um, we do get tornadoes here in Florida, not often, but we do get hurricanes and stuff like that. So you want communications. You want you want to know everything. You want to cover your whole area. Um, cover all your options. So we get a single link USB. We have the uh, Alicraft KX3. We have a compact inline noise eliminating module. Above that, I got the KX3 temperature. Uh, as you can see, it's so showing 90 degrees right now. That's because the radio's been on a long time. And then the KXPA100, it shows the temperature of that, the uh, amount of each one right over the heatsink. Uh, this one is right over where they have the output transistors. And uh, the speakers are all labeled. Here's this it says CB. And this Motorola it says KX3. Then you got your UHF and your VHF for the Kenwood TMV7. Um, right here, I have uh, a, a case with uh, all my Signal Link uh, chips and adapters. Um, here you have. Let's see, yeah, we can still have it. All right. I got my main panel power. I put all switches in here. The reason why I use switches to shut some of this system off, because if you're running on battery power, you don't want you don't want you know you don't need the uh, this on. You don't need the panel lights on. So this switch right here operates the DSP. This right here operates lights. There's your red light. There's your white light. Oh, that's actually red and white, and that's your red. And that's your white. Nighttime, it looks really nice. This right here is the interior light. You can see it's lit up back there now. And that's in case you want to. You need to work in the back. We're going to leave that on because we're going to go there in a minute. This is for the amplifier for the Motorola. And then I have a fan switch over here. Uh, this is for the cooling fan for the KX3. We'll see that in the back in a minute. Uh, it's got high and it's got low, and then the middle is off. You have a, for your CW key, you have a quarter inch and uh, you have a one eighth inch. We got a 25 amp circuit breaker. We got two power poles. And of course, this is the main power to turn on the uh, power supply. This doesn't turn on the battery. Uh, once you lose power and this, this light goes out, the relay then uh, clicks down, it de energizes, and you uh, just have the battery kicking in. This right here is a low battery alarm. And uh, you set it to, I set it to about 9 volts because uh, we have this right here. It's uh, a boost regulator. It's by TGE. It's called an N8XJK boost regulator. Uh, it's pretty good. What it does is uh, it takes low battery power and it uh, brings it up to 13.8 volts. As you can see, we have 13.8 right here. And coming from the battery box, we have 13.2. So I set it when it gets down to uh, low power, the alarm goes off. Very easy to build. One IC chip, it only uses uh, one, two, uh, six legs on it, but it's really easy to put together. One IC chip, two resistors, one diode, and uh, of course the uh, piezo tweeter and a LED. Alright, everything from the KX3 is in here. This is a volume control. The uh, compact inline uh, module doesn't put out enough power. It is the KX3 to actually uh, power the Motorola speaker. So what I did was I built a an amplifier, a mono amplifier, put it in the back and I put the volume control up over here so that uh, 
you can get volume, you can adjust it, you've got plenty of power. Uh, let's see, uh, let's go take a look at the battery box really quick. Oh, there's a low power alarm on the battery box too. It's not a blinking light, it's just uh, a, an LED and of course the alarm. And here's your adjustment. Now, right here is a battery that's 8.8 uh, .8 volts and I use that. I take these alligator clips off, put it onto there and then I adjust my, uh, my low battery alarm. So I know when it gets down to 8.8 .8 volts that uh, it's going to go off. This is a 12, uh, 12 volt, 35 amp hour battery. There's the low battery alarm. Uh, then these, of course, we have uh, some cables over here. We have a light adapter cables, and uh, one's kind of like universal. And it's all contained, self-contained in this box. Carry anywhere. Now, um, I'm using this right here. I want to just display this uh, also on a video. But uh, this unit, this go box is already, it's self-contained. It has a battery in the back. Before I forget, this goes to my uh, AH4 on the vertical, the Icom AH4 auto tuner. Uh, this goes to the vertical antenna in the back. What I do is I'll key this. And uh, see, now the red light went out, so it's already, it's tuned. Um, in the back right over here. Let's see, get this one together. Okay, in the back we have, this is the relay I was talking about, that, uh, when you have, uh, when you turn, we have batter, uh, I'm sorry, when you have current coming from your outlet, it's going to energize the uh, power supply. You know, you turn the switch on that's in the front. Power supply comes on, energizes the relay, and it moves the uh, double pole, double throw section of the relay and brings it up so it disconnects the battery and it's just running on the power supply. Uh, this battery right here is a Biano battery. Uh, I, it, you need 14.5 volts to charge it, so no sense putting 13.8 to 14.5. Uh, these Biano batteries last forever. These are great. I mean, I had it running five hours yesterday, five, six hours, and it still had over 12 volts in it. Uh, this right here is your solar charge controller. When you hook up your solar panels to here, it goes to the charge controller to charge. Basically, it's for a sealed lead acid battery. Um, I could connect the solar panels probably direct to the uh, Biano, Bioano, whatever. Now what we have is we have antenna one for the KX3, antenna two for the KX3. These are dust covers, help protect it. Um, and this will, this is for the CB radio. This wire coming out, and this is for the UHF VHF. Uh, the reason why I didn't mount that into the panel is because when I did, and you go on UHF, uh, you just get all sorts of nasty RF stuff. These modules right here, these are uh, terminal boards. Um, what we have is they're all numbered. This comes off, and uh, these are all numbered. And that helps you troubleshoot if you have a problem you have a wiring diagram here everything's all white I don't know if you can see that okay that's a wiring diagram that actually rolls up and it gets attached to there 13.6 volts you can see the voltage in the back if you're working back here you have uh, two 5 volt USB ports charge your cell phone whatever and you got a cigarette lighter adapter. Cigarette lighter adapter is for uh, my DC AC to DC to AC inverter. 217 volts right here plugs into the cigarette lighter, and that also gets stored inside here. The Biano battery charger is right here. That also fits in here. 
it, this is all self-contained. You just take it with you. Everything's in it. If you have to work on the back, what you can do is you just pull this out, take this screw out of here, and everything, it's on, on hinges, and everything just swings open. Now let's take a look in the back. I have to take it off the tripod now. Probably shake all over the place. I hope I'm not boring you yet. Now, if you can see back there by the uh, signal link, you see the uh, little turquoise color? That's, what that is, is uh, that's a quick release for, uh, for the chips, uh, for IC chips. And what I did was I used it for uh, the signal link. Uh, I actually uh, wired that up, you know, drilled a little hole, ran all the wires, soldered it up, so that I could change over the, uh, the uh, chips from uh, the KX3 to the uh, the Kenwood TMV7. Uh, you just pull on that lever and very you pop out and you put it back in again. I did that because it was a pain in the neck to switch those chips out because you had to take the USB out and uh, you know, I mean, you had to take the signal USB out and you had to open up the case, you know, take the four screws out. This right here is one, two, three. Uh, right over there is the fan, the fan for the uh, KX3 that gets turned on and off. And by the way, everything in here is Velcroed so that I can actually rip this apart one, two, three really fast. Um, everything comes out of here. See, we got everything here. I think so. GE battery box. All right, let's go to the antennas now. There's a UHF VHF antenna. It's a J pole. It's also attached to the vertical. It's a 40 foot vertical. Um, now they make a 31 foot vertical. It's called the Eagle One, but um, I wanted 40 feet. And it was only, uh, it, you know, the the, uh, the pole's not expensive. It's a spider beam pole. And uh, then, of course, you have the J pole. That's for UHF, VHF, connected with PVC. I'll walk over there in a minute for the CB radio right here. And you can see the black sleeve. Slide that up and down, and it adjusts the SWR on it. And there you go. That's about eight feet tall. And it actually goes high. It's just that it's a little windy today, and uh, I have a what do you call like a, a corkscrew that goes into the uh, ground, but I can't find it right now. It's uh, what you would use. I got from a pet store that you would hook the um, you know a dog chain up to, and uh, that would anchor this down to the ground. Now, right here is uh, one of the military poles. So I took a military pole, four quick blocks. It's called quick block, K-W-I-C-K, B-L-O-C-K, quick block. Um, and that's how I separated the uh, vertical antenna from it. And you have the J pole is connected to PVC. It, PVC slips into here, it's nice and tight. And the J-Pole is up there. It was looking good. Now, uh, this is all held down by... I got long screws in here. Actually, it's like about 12-inch uh, screws. And then, of course, I put in some tent stakes. There's the Icon AH-4. And there's the choke. All right, um, I guess that's about it. Uh, that's my uh, it's my go my emergency uh, communications. You can go anywhere and just put this stuff up. The antenna collapses nice and small. The J pole comes apart really easy, and um, so does the uh, CB antenna. All right, thanks for watching. Um, we're all done. All right, KJ4FGI. I hope I didn't bore you guys. I'm clear.